Why is streaming so complicated? What settings do I even use? I don't have a $3,000 PC, how can I get a decent stream? How and where do I even start? Do I need this? Do I need that? Relax. It's a lot easier than you think. Let me show you how it's done. YouTube! What is going on today? Let us talk about how to go live on a budget. If you're watching this video, chances are that you're new to streaming or streaming has crossed your mind lately and you're wondering how you can set up a decent stream in the fastest way possible at a very low cost. I got you, bro. To set up a basic stream, you need three things. A decent laptop or PC with a good internet connectivity, a streaming platform, and a broadcasting software, or as some people may call it, a streaming software. In this video, I assume you already have a low-end PC which you want to stream from, so I'll just move on to discuss the next most important thing, which is the streaming platform. One of the most important decisions you're actually going to have to make is to decide on one platform to broadcast your content from, from the numerous platforms that we have today. The top platforms include Twitch, YouTube Live, Facebook Gaming, Trovo, and Cake. The question is how do you know which is right for you? Let me try to help you with that. I'm not going to go into so much details, I'll just reserve that for another video, but here are four main points I'll consider as a new streamer when selecting a streaming platform. Type of content or community, discoverability, requirement to get monetized, and revenue or how much money I'll actually make if I decide to stream on this platform. Alright, so let us do a side-by-side -side comparison with the main platforms and at the end you are going to decide for yourself which streaming platform you actually want to use. So depending on what you want to stream, some of these platforms might or might not be suitable for you. For instance, if you want to stream video games, then these platforms are all good to stream video games and even some are better for specific type of games like mobile games. You could use Strobo for instance, it's more suitable for mobile games. And if you're a Spanish content creator, that is even a plus because it's more you know, directed towards the Spanish community, I would say. For IRL streams or in real life streams, just to cut across all these platforms, you can stream in real life content on all these platforms. But the difference comes in when you want to stream certain things like sports, music, just a lot of other stuff, then YouTube is your favorite place to go. For instance, if you want to stream sports, if you want to stream music, if you want to stream, you know, you walking around and doing something crazy, YouTube is definitely the place to do that. And you know, the other platforms might support it, but you'll probably not find a viewer base for that. All right, so discoverability. This is basically being seen or discovered as a new streamer or finding your audience at the early stages of your stream. With Twitch, this is not so nice. Twitch doesn't have a really nice algorithm to boost new streamers. So being a new streamer on Twitch can be really hectic. It's not so nice to new streamers. Well, Kick does a pretty good job in this sense. It uses its smart algorithm to find a suitable audience for the new streamer and also, you know, just pushes your content out a bit. Facebook Live is also not so bad. I don't have a lot to say to this, but I know it's definitely better than Twitch. Well, Trovo is also quite good, especially if you're a mobile game streamer and if you're also in the Spanish community, that helps a lot. So the best in discoverability among these five is YouTube Live. YouTube has a really good algorithm that pushes your content out and, you know, suggests your content to the people out there and help you find the right audience for you. Requirements to get monetized. So for Twitch, you need at least 50 followers, stream on seven different days, stream for at least eight hours and have an average of three viewers. For Kick, you need at least 75 followers and have to stream for at least five hours. So with YouTube, it's a bit complicated because it takes your whole profile into consideration Thus, the long videos you're posting, the short videos you're posting and all, and the requirements are you have to have 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time on your long videos, that's in the last 12 months, or 1,000 subscribers and 10 million public short views in the last 90 days. For Facebook gaming, you just need 100 followers and you have to stream on two different days in one consecutive 14-day period. That's in 14 days, you have to stream for at least two days. And for Trovo, you need at least 20 followers, at least five hours of total stream time, and 5,000 gems in your Trovo balance. So what are these Trovo gems? According to their website, these Trovo gems are basically a form of a virtual currency which can be used on just Trovo. So you can read more on it, I'll leave the link in the description, you can find out exactly what these gems are and how you end them. Now, let's talk about the fan favorite, cash money, revenue, <laughs> yeah boy. How much can you actually make on these platforms? Let's take a look. So on Twitch, at the time of making this video, there is a 70-30 split rule which states that the streamer makes 70% of anything they earn on Twitch. I mean, regardless of how much they make, 
they make 70% of everything and they get 100% of their donations. On YouTube, it is a bit complicated as usual. You get 55% of the partner program ad revenue. You also get some money from super stickers and super chat. And you get 70% of the memberships, the super tanks, and you know, all these kind of additional YouTube features. I'll leave some links in the description. You can read more on that. In Facebook gaming, you get some amount on subscriptions. It's not exactly clear how much you get. You also get about $0.01 per star. These stars are basically some form of coins that the viewers, you know, give to you when they like a stream or, you know, they, they fancy you, maybe they just give to you maybe 20 stars or 50 stars. And you multiply this 50 by the 0.01, that's how much you get and everything goes to you. You also get some amount of money from in-stream ads, which is about eight to $10 per thousand views, depending on your geographical location and other factors. And the winner for this category is, of course, Kick, which gives you about 95% of what you earn on that platform. All right, so that's an overview of the top streaming platforms. And of course, I'm going to leave links in the description for you to read more on this topic so you can be able to select the streaming platform that best suits you. And before you ask, yes, it is possible to stream on multiple platforms at the same time, but I will highly not recommend that as a new streamer because it's just too much work. And I'll just suggest you focus on one platform at a time, try to grow it a bit, grow your community, understand the game, and then you can be able to extend to other platforms and possibly stream on multiple platforms at the same time. Next on the list is the broadcasting software. For this, we are going to narrow down the list and I would recommend using either OBS Studio or OBS Streamlabs. Why am I saying this? These two softwares have a really wide user base and a great community. This means you'll find help with almost everything you need and you also get some tips to help you stream properly compared to other streaming softwares. I myself have several configuration videos on OBS giving you certain tips and tricks to use OBS Streamlabs and give you, you know, a really decent stream so you can check them out. Anyway, for this tutorial, we're going to stick to OBS Streamlabs because I think it's user-friendly and a really good broadcasting software for beginners. Let's hop into my PC and set things up. So you're going to go into your browser and type streamlabs.com. This should bring you to the official download page of Streamlabs OBS. Go ahead and download it and go through the installation process. It should be quick and painless. Once you successfully installed Streamlabs OBS, boot it up, you should be greeted with this welcome screen. Select live streaming, click on beginner, click continue. Then here you can either create a Streamlabs account or click on the login to view the other login options that you have. I'm just going to skip it for now. Click on start fresh. I'll skip the webcam settings too. Here you have some free overlays you can use for your stream, but I'm just going to skip it for now. Click on the starter pack. Then get started. So we have an empty OBS now and the first thing we're going to have to do is to add a new scene. So click on this plus thingy here to add a new scene. Let's name it live. Click on done to add a new scene. I'm just going to delete this real quick. Now we have live scene. Let us add some sources to the scene. So click on this plus thingy at the sources. You should see over here the different type of sources that we have. But we are going to select display capture for now. Click on add source. Click on add source again. Then click on done to add a display capture. The display capture basically shows everything on the selected monitor screen. If you have more than one monitor, you can select this particular monitor in the settings. So the display capture is for general purpose to use if you want to show something on your screen, if you are streaming certain games. But if you stream specific type of games like mobile games, you should watch this video right here where I show you exactly how you can set up a mobile stream in OBS Streamlabs. If you're a PC gamer just like me, this video will definitely help you out. Check it out. So the next thing we're going to do is to add a microphone if you have one available. Go to the settings over here, close to the microphone, select properties. Over here, you don't really need to change anything. All you have to do is to select the microphone that you have to so go to the devices. In my case, it is the HyperX Quadcast. So I'm just going to select it and go on top here and click on the X icon to close this window. The next step, which is optional, is to add a webcam or a camera. If you don't plan on showing your face, that's totally fine. You can skip this step. For those that want to, let's go ahead and set it up. So in the sources, click on this plus thingy over here again. This time, we are going to select video capture device. Click on add source. Click on add source again. And select the camera that you have. I have the Logitech C920. I'm going to select it. And then go ahead and click on close. You don't really need to change anything over here. The camera quality is good. But if you have a crappy camera just like I do, you can go ahead and watch this video over here where I show you how to tweak your cheap webcam and make it look a lot more professional. This time we are ready to go live and you can do it in two ways, either by clicking on this login icon over here which shows you the options that you have to log in or go into the settings, select stream and locate the stream key box over here. Here you need to enter a stream key which you can find in the settings of your streaming platform account. 
I'm going to use switch as an example. In Twitch, I'm going to go into the crypto dashboard, locate the settings, go to stream. Then the stream key should be here. That's the primary stream key. You don't have to show this to anybody. You can go ahead and just copy it, go back to Streamlabs and paste it right here. Click on done. And all you have to do now is to click on go live and you will be live. And probably later you can also customize your stream, add some nice overlays, add some, you know, really nice transitions and alerts just to improve the quality of your stream. All right, guys. So that is how to go live in the fastest way possible at a really low cost. If this video is helpful to you, don't forget to leave a like on it and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. As always, I am always open to knowing your thoughts and suggestions in the comments below. I wish you the best of luck for your streaming journey and you should absolutely watch this video where I go over the mistakes that I did as a streamer and what I would do different if I started streaming again. See you soon. Peace.